In mathematics, a closure operator on a set S is a function from the power set of S to itself which satisfies the following conditions for all sets closure operators, are determined by their closed sets i.e., by the sets of the form CL. Since the closure CL of a set X is the smallest closed set containing X, such families of closed sets are sometimes called Moore families, in honor of E. H. Moore who studied closure operators in 1911. Closure operators are also called Hull operators, which prevents confusion with the closure operators studied in topology. A set together with a closure operator on it is sometimes called the closure system. Closure operators have many applications. In topology, the closure operators are topological closure operators, which must satisfy for all. In algebra and logic, many closure operators are finitary closure operators, i.e., they satisfy in universal logic. Closure operators are also known as consequence operators. In the theory of partially ordered sets, which are important in theoretical computer science, closure operators have an alternative definition. Closure operators in topology. The topological closure of a subset X of a topological space consists of all points Y of the space, such that every neighborhood of Y contains a point of X. The function that associates to every subset X its closure is a topological closure operator. Conversely, every topological closure operator on a set gives rise to a topological space whose closed sets are exactly the closed sets with respect to the closure operator. For topological closure operators the second closure axiom is redundant. Closure operators in algebra. Finitary closure operators play a relatively prominent role in universal algebra, and in this context they are traditionally called algebraic closure operators. Every subset of an algebra generates a subalgebra, the smallest subalgebra containing the set. This gives rise to a finitary closure operator. Perhaps the best known example for this is the function that associates to every subset of a given vector space its linear span. Similarly, the function that associates to every subset of a given group the subgroup generated by it. And similarly for fields in all other types of algebraic structures. The linear span in a vector space and the similar algebraic closure in a field both satisfy the exchange property. If X is in the closure of the union of A and Y, but not in the closure of A, then Y is in the closure of the union of A and X. A finitary closure operator with this property is called a matroid. The dimension of a vector space, or the transcendence degree of a field is exactly the rank of the corresponding matroid. The function that maps every subset of a given field to its algebraic closure is also a finitary closure operator, and in general it is different from the operator mentioned before. Finitary closure operators that generalize these two operators are studied in model theory as DCL and ACL. The convex hull in n-dimensional Euclidean space is another example of a finitary closure operator. It satisfies the anti-exchange property. If X is not contained in the union of A and Y, but in its closure, then Y is not contained in the closure of the union of A and X. Finitary closure operators with this property give rise to anti-matroids. Closure operators in logic. Suppose you have some logical formalism that contains certain rules allowing you to derive new formulas from given ones. Consider the set F of all possible formulas, and let P be the power set of F, ordered by. For a set X of formulas, let CL be the set of all formulas that can be derived from X. Then CL is a closure operator on P. More precisely, we can obtain CL as follows. Call continuous an operator J such that, for every directed class T, J equals lim J. This continuity condition is on the basis of a fixed point theorem for J. Consider the one-step operator J of a monotone logic. This is the operator associating any set X of formulas with the set J of formulas which are either logical axioms or obtained by an inference rule from formulas in X or in X. 
then such an operator is continuous and we can define CL as the least fixed point for J greater or equal to X. In accordance with such a point of view, Tashi, Brown, Sisko and other authors proposed a general approach to logic based on closure operator theory. Also, such an idea is proposed in programming logic and in fuzzy logic. Consequence operators Around 1930, Alfred Tarshi developed an abstract theory of logical deductions which models some properties of logical calculi. Mathematically, what he described is just a finitary closure operator on a set. In universal logic, finitary closure operators are still studied under the name consequence operator, which was coined by Tarshi. The set S represents a set of sentences, a subset T of S A theory, and C L is the set of all sentences that follow from the theory. Nowadays the term can refer to closure operators which need not be finitary. Finitary closure operators are then sometimes called finite consequence operators. Close sets. The closed sets with respect to a closure operator on S form a subset C of the power set P. Any intersection of sets in C is again in C. In other words, C is a complete meet subsema lattice of P. Conversely, if CP is closed under arbitrary intersections, then the function that associates to every subset X of S the smallest set Y C such that X Y is a closure operator. A closure operator on a set is topological if and only if the set of closed sets is closed under finite unions, i.e., C is a meet complete sublattice of P. Even for non-topological closure operators, C can be seen as having the structure of a lattice being cleaned, but then C is not a sublattice of the lattice P. Given a finitary closure operator on a set, the closures of finite sets are exactly the compact elements of the set C of closed sets. It follows that C is an algebraic posit. Since C is also a lattice, it is often referred to as an algebraic lattice in this context. Conversely, if C is an algebraic posit, then the closure operator is finitary. Closure operators on partially ordered sets. A partially ordered set is a set together with a partial order, i.e., a binary relation which is reflexive, transitive and antisymmetric. Every power set P together with inclusion is a partially ordered set. A function CL, PP from a partial order P to itself is called a closure operator if it satisfies the following axioms for all elements X, Y and P. More succinct alternatives are available. The definition above is equivalent to the single axiom X CL if and only if CL CL for all X, Y and P. Using the pointwise order on functions between poses, one may alternatively write the extensiveness property as IDP CL, where it is the identity function, a self-map K that that is increasing an idempotent, but satisfies the dual of the extensiveness property, i.e., KIDP is called a kernel operator, interior operator, or dual closure. As examples, if A is a subset of a set B, then the self-map on the power set of B given by mu A equals AX is a closure operator, whereas lambda A equals AX is a kernel operator. The ceiling function from the real numbers to the real numbers, which assigns to every real X the smallest integer not smaller than X is another example of a closure operator, a fixed point of the function CL, i.e., an element C of P that satisfies CL equals C, is called a closed element. A closure operator on a partially ordered set is determined by its closed elements. If C is a closed element, then X C and CL C are equivalent conditions. Every Galois connection gives rise to a closure operator. In fact, every closure operator arises in this way from a suitable Galois connection. The Galois connection is not uniquely determined by the closure operator. One Galois connection that gives rise to the closure operator CL can be described as follows. If A is the set of closed elements with respect to CL, then CL, 
PA is the lower adjoint of a Galois connection between P and A, with the upper adjoint being the embedding of A into P. Furthermore, every lower adjoint of an embedding of some subset into P is a closure operator. Closure operators are lower adjoint of embeddings. Note however that not every embedding has a lower adjoint. Any partially ordered set P can be viewed as a category, with a single morphism from X to Y if and only if X, Y. The closure operators on the partially ordered set P are then nothing but the monads on the category P. Equivalently, a closure operator can be viewed as an endofunctor on the category of partially ordered sets that has the additional idempotent and extensive properties. If P is a complete lattice, then a subset A of P is the set of closed elements for some closure operator on P if and only if A is a more family on P, i.e., the largest element of P is in A, and the infimum of any non-empty subset of A is again in A. Any such set A is itself a complete lattice with the order inherited from P operation might differ from that of P. When P is the power set Boolean algebra of a set X, then a more family on P is called a closure system on X. The closure operators on P form themselves a complete lattice. The order on closure operators is defined by CL1, CL2, IFF, CL1, CL2 for all X in P. History The concept of a closure is due to E. H. Moore, appearing in his 1910 introduction to a form of general analysis whereas that of a closure subset originated in the work of Fridges' reason connection with topological spaces.